Okay, so I'm going to talk about evaluation measures for classifiers. And um, I'm going to start with just our basic setup where we have the um, observations along the, you know, in the rows, and then we have the features in the columns. And um, we have our labels for each uh, observation. And then we have our predictions, which come from our classifier. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we often um, consider classification using the predict the sign of F as the predicted label. Okay, so here uh, um, in the predicted labels column, I've just uh, placed placed um, the sign of the function F. Okay, now to do an evaluation, we're just looking at whether the labels, the predicted labels, agree with the true labels. So the only thing that I'm going to keep for now is uh, the labels and the predicted labels, okay? Um, later on, we'll do um, evaluation metrics that depend on the value of the function itself, but for now, we're just going to look at the labels and the predicted labels and see how often they agree with each other in different ways. I'm just going to add a few more uh, examples there just to have more. Um, and then uh, a true positive is when you predict that something's positive and it actually is. A true negative is when you predict something's negative and it actually is. Um, a false positive is when you predict that something is positive, but it actually isn't. And that's also called a type one error. And then a false negative is where you predict that something is negative, but it actually isn't. Okay, so that's, that's, uh, those are the four different flavors of, <laughs> of um, predicted versus true here. And we often, um, and oh, by the way, those, the, the, the ones that are in red are errors. That's when you make an error. And then obviously you don't make an error when, um, when you have a true negative or a true positive. And so these four things, they go in a matrix. It's called the confusion matrix. Uh, and confusion matrices are, are very, very useful to look at when you're doing any kind of applied classification task because um, they give you a lot more information than just looking at the classification error, especially when your data is in balance. Like if you have much fewer positives than you have negatives, then it's really important to look at the whole confusion matrix rather than just looking at just the overall classification error because the overall classification error is mostly coming from that larger class, right? So you want to look at kind of how the classifier is doing on both classes. Okay, and so I've just put in the labels there. Um, so the true positives are on the upper left, the true negatives are on the lower right, and then we have the two types of error in the table as well. Okay, now there are a number of different class, a number of different evaluation measures that come from various ways to combine these four numbers in the confusion matrix. So I just want to go through all of those just so that you've had some uh, so, some exposure to those to that information. Okay, so the misclassification error it is just the fraction of the data that are either false positives or false negatives. Okay, so it's just an equal count, fine. Okay, so that again, that's just a fraction of points that are misclassified. And um, yeah, it's just the fraction of the overall points that sit in those two, those two boxes there, the false positives and false negatives. Okay, now this is the true positive rate. It's also called the sensitivity and it's also called the recall. So it gets very confusing when people, you have, you have to kind of translate between different languages if you're talking to different people. Um, so doctors often use sensitivity and the people information, in information retrieval often use recall. Okay, so, uh, so recall is the fraction of positives that are true positives. So uh, the way I like to think about this quantity, I pretty much, I, I, when I think about it, I think about it in the information retrieval sense. So let's say that we're building a search engine, and um, we want to um, we want to make sure that the um, the recall is good. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that of all the web pages that were relevant to the search query, what fraction of those were on the page that I returned? Okay, so of of the overall web pages in the world that were you know good matches to the search query, what, what fraction of those ones were, was I able to recall? Okay, and so um, the way I've written this here on the slide 
the green circle is just that's the denominator that's the no total number of positives and then the number of true positives is in blue there okay so hopefully you, you get the sense of what this quantity is here and then the specificity is the, also called the true negative rate and that's the number it's the fraction of negatives that are true negatives okay so here again i've used the green circle as the uh, to illustrate the denominator in that fraction and then true negatives is in blue. Okay, the false positive rate is the fraction of negatives that were that were false positives. Okay, so it's the the rate of rate of false positives. And then precision is the um, fraction of predicted positives that were actually true positives. And now the way I remember this one is again in terms of information retrieval. So let's say I'm building my search engine. And for this particular evaluation measure, all I do is look at the, you know, the first page of search returns, okay? So I built the search engine, I look at the first page of search returns, and I just wanna see how many of these are relevant to the query. I don't care what happened, I don't care whether, the, whether I've captured all the relevant um, web pages, all I care about is that um, within whatever I returned, how many of those are actually relevant to the query. And so that's the precision. Now the F1 score is, is kind of a harmonic balance between precision and recall. So it's, it measures both whether what I returned was good, right? That's precision. And it, it also measures whether I've, you know, captured most of what's good in the world. And that's of course recall. Okay, so in the next video, I'll talk about RSE curves, which is a way of measuring um, or evaluating a classifier that uses the, the values of the function F.